Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and quite a few people have asked me if I would cover the tragic story of Harambe the gorilla and his death this week. And you know what? Yes, I know this is off topic. Yes, I know it has nothing to do with fitness. But you guys saw the title of this video and you clicked on it. And you know what? I have produced hours of informative fitness content in the last week. And you know, I like to just cover something off topic every now and then. And it's been a little while since I've done so. So I'm going to do just that. All right, I want to state up front that I am not qualified to have an opinion on this topic. Just like 99.9% .9 of the people I've seen writing stuff about this or making memes or posting stuff all over my social media feed for the last few days, I am not a zoologist. I have never taken a single class in zoology and I'm not a parent. And outside of what I've read in books, I don't know the first thing about parenting. So I'm completely unqualified to have an opinion here, but I'm going to give you my unqualified opinion anyways. All right, the first thing I've noticed with everyone talking about this, the most bizarre thing and the most absurd thing I've seen all through social media is people making ties to racism with this or white privilege and even the Black Lives Matter acting like this is something racist because the gorilla is black. Wow. All right, first of all, the fact that anyone is even equating black men to gorillas is pretty much the most fucking racist thing I've heard in probably the last five or six years. And I know some white old rednecks. That is actually the most racist shit I think I've heard in a really, really long time. Number two, did any of these people actually look into the family and the child in question? The little boy who was saved was black. And by black, I don't mean that like Obama had a black father and a white mother. I mean, both of his parents are very clearly African-American. He is black. They killed the gorilla to save a little black boy. If you can find racism in that, there's something seriously fucking wrong with you. All right, on to the next point. You know, uh, the whole thing about people saying, hey, couldn't they have just used a tranquilizer? Well, you know, talking about gorilla strength, I have a whole video on the strength of great apes versus humans. It's quite a long, detailed video, and I'm going to link it in this one just so we can get that out of the way so we can actually turn this somewhat informative and on topic with another video I've had. You know, I'm not a zoologist, but I did read the statement by the zoologist who made the call to uh, tell them to go ahead and shoot the gorilla instead of using a tranquilizer, and because I'm not qualified to have an opinion on that, I'm going to have to agree with the expert. He made the call to do that, and he felt that because the gorilla was already agitated, and that it can take the tranquilizer quite a few seconds to kick in, in the best case of scenarios, that he was afraid with the sheer strength of the gorilla, and we know that male silverback gorillas are capable of deadlifting upwards of 2,000 pounds, and they don't have the fine motor skills that humans have, that he could just flinch from that, and even in a fit of rage or flinching, could probably shatter every bone in that little boy's body in a fraction of a second, that the risk wasn't worth it. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, what does that zoologist know about gorillas and how they respond to tranquilizers? He doesn't know anything I know more than he does. Well, actually, you probably don't. I'm going to have to say, if that's what you're saying, then you're probably a fucking moron. And we could argue all day long about the value of animal life, particularly slightly more endangered species like gorillas versus human life. And that might be a valid argument in many cases. However, in our society and in our legal system in this country, we value human children more than we value animals, even endangered species. Now, you can make the argument for Darwinism and improving our own species by allowing the stupid to just die, to get rid of their dumb genes if they pull something stupid. But you know what? That's not the type of ethics that we built our society upon. And if we had a society built on those type of ethics, we could make that type of argument. But that's not how our laws are written, and that's not the ethics that we've based our society on. So the laws of our society and the laws of our country say we have to value the life of a child more than a gorilla. And furthermore, since it comes down to that's what the laws state and what our society states, had the zoo not responded in such a manner as the way our, both our ethics and our laws are written, they would have been subject to an absolutely enormous lawsuit had they not taken action and done something to stop the gorilla or took an action that resulted in the death of the child when they could have prevented it. So, purely from a legal perspective of the zoo who 
has an obligation to keep all of its animals alive because it keeps large numbers of endangered species and who need to keep those breeding populations in place. Had they not taken section action and they were sued for millions of dollars, dozens of endangered species might have starved and not been able to be housed or their breeding populations that are rotated through that zoo might have been lost resulting in the loss of many numbers of an endangered species. So even if your priority is the preservation of an endangered species over a human life just to logistically due to the laws in place, they probably still made the right call there. Even if you think the gorilla is more valuable than the child, you've got to look at that logistics aspect of it and the financial aspect of it there. You can't ignore that. Well, you can, but it wouldn't be very intelligent or analytical of you to do so. You're not looking at the big picture. But you do have the right. I'm wrong. You do have the right to ignore that. Now, we get to the issue of why did this tragedy have to happen? Because a parent wasn't watching their kid. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, things happen really, really fast for children. Yeah, other than I believe uh, the way the story goes that I saw was that the child was climbing up there and the parents didn't stop him. That they had seen him do it and didn't stop him. They let their child run wild. And here's the other thing. When you're in a place like that, you do see a lot of children running around with those uh, leashes and harnesses on. And some people say, well, I'm not doing that to my child. My child's not a dog. said, well, do you want your child climbing into a gorilla cage? because that's what children do who are in places like that and they're not on leashes. You're around all these cages and things full of dangerous animals that could kill your child and the least of your concerns is putting them on a leash because you don't feel like your child is a dog. Well, those leashes start to sound like a pretty good idea after this child climbed into the gorilla cage and uh, the gorilla had to be shot. In fact, maybe those should be mandatory at zoos, amusements, parks, things like that. Maybe anyone who's walking around with a child not on a leash and a harness like that should be fine like we find people for uh, who are walking dogs without a leash in certain areas. Maybe that would be a pretty good thing to put in place. And I'm pretty sure if the zoo sues the parents over this situation for the loss of the gorilla, they're going to really, really wish that they had put a leash on their child and put him in one of those harnesses. In fact, we got a good laugh at that because my girlfriend says that she remembers as a kid going to a petting zoo and there's photos of her with her mom having her in the petting zoo with one of those leashes on a harness running around. Had her tethered to her mother's waist. You know what? Again, these kitty leashes are starting to look like a pretty good idea at this point. Maybe we need to implement more of this. Because children are not dogs, you might say. Well, that's true because uh, pretty much every dog I've ever had was smart enough not to climb into a gorilla cage. So it might be fair to say that some three and four year old children aren't as intelligent as your dog and they might need more supervision and restrictions. Just throwing it out there. So we come to what should happen to the parents here. Well, in most situations like this, the parents acted negligently. Now we could argue all day long that they couldn't have known. Well, just like I couldn't have known if um, I happen to get in my car when I'm really, really sleepy and I'm too tired to drive and I wreck and kill somebody. Do you know how the law is written in those situations? It's not manslaughter, it's criminally negligent homicide. That maybe I should have known that I was taking a risk, but I didn't think about it or realize I took a risk at the time. That's what criminally negligent homicide means. So in this case, you could have negligence because the parent should have known that letting their child climb up into that uh, gorilla thing and turning their backs while they saw him climbing up was a bad idea. They didn't. And they didn't think through the consequences and the results were their child being put in danger and the death of this uh, gorilla, an endangered species. So, I'm not saying they should be charged with a criminal offense, because I don't think they should in this case, but does that zoo have solid grounds to sue the pants off of them for it? Yeah, probably. Do I think ethically that's pretty reasonable at this point because their negligence and not watching their child closer or having better supervision or putting them on a leash in a big crowded place like that that's dangerous with dangerous animals everywhere inside of cages that they could try to slip through or climb over into. Yeah, I think that's totally reasonable. So if I've got to give my opinion on this whole thing and I step back and look at it, I would say it looks like the zoo probably made the best choice overall socially, legally, and for the overall protection of their animals as a whole that they are uh, responsible for caring for, yeah, I think they made the right call. Would it be the right call for the parents to also be sued and to have some sort of at least civil responsibility for their negligence? Yeah, I think so. 
And do I think it's a really, really good idea to put your child on a leash when they're in a place like this? Yes, I think that's a fantastic idea. We need to do more of that. All right, guys, so there you have it. My completely unqualified opinion on this topic, just throwing in my two cents like everyone else. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.